Well, I'm just getting to the stage where I was thinking about uh, putting the choke uh, in circuit, the little choke that I've uh, got for the job. And uh, I thought I'll just check the um, the switch, what they call the standby switch. And uh, on the front of this radio, it's actually called the send on the circuit diagram. I think it's called standby. And um, I just thought I'd check that switch out and here I'm across the the switch contacts and uh, you see on the meter there I've got uh, 212 ohms um, and if I switch it off it, it's open circuit four mega ohms so I'm just teasing the switch there um, so uh, that, that's going to need some attention before I go any further so 6k so I don't know if it's just dirty or um, that switch was switched on and um, uh, at the instant that that choke uh, died sometime many years ago uh, so it could have wiped the contacts out on the switch so uh, in the first place I'll just um, put a little cleaner in there and see what that does this is the switch in question and uh, remember I said earlier it has had a knock sometime in its life and I, I actually said it operated okay and that, uh, by that I meant it uh, it sounded okay but that's not the case uh, what I'm going to do is just give it a little uh, sniff of uh, WD-40 wouldn't normally recommend uh, using WD-40 in the kitchen and I'll put a little bit of tissue underneath just in case I get any overspill and I've got the nozzle on there and I'm just going to pop a bit in there and just give it a little that's, that's more than enough there and uh, let's see what we can do but there are, there are no screws on that switch so there's nothing I can open up to, uh, to have a look inside um, but we'll see what, uh, what that's done for us. OK, I've uh, flipped the radio back over. And, uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> Point 0.1 of an ohm. Uh, zero ohms. OK, so... Um, OK, that's... Uh, uh, I'm pleased to see that again. That's uh, so, uh, the, the magic of that um, WD-40. So thanks again for uh, um, thanks again to Rick uh, for his tip on the WD-40. Well, you've seen that for yourself. That's that's not bad. Okay, so that's uh, we'll move on and we'll uh, pop the choke in next. So this is a uh, three Henry choke that I've got, and I'm just going to. Uh, uh, jury rig it in there and try not to wire it in with the tripod just move the tripod out of the way a bit I could do with one of those cameras that uh, you have on your forehead but I think it would make you giddy <laughs> A head cam. Okay, and whilst I'm at it, I've got a little uh, speaker that uh, I'll um, connect on the back in the faint hope that we hear something. So that's the choke wired in, which I'll just push out of the way. Uh, so I've put a speaker on and uh, I've also put a bit of wire on the aerial uh, connection just in case there's some action um, so I'm really doing my dirty washing in public here and make myself look a complete fool I'm going to put the meter onto the um, capacitor there just so as we can monitor the HTDC remember we're still on the, um, the series light bulb and I'm on ohms which won't help so we'll set that to uh, DC got a connection there and right I'll plug it in uh, switch on uh, 
the main supply so um, that rectifier valves warming up now and that's uh, we'll just let that settle and uh, I've got the switch open that switch that I've just cleaned the standby switch uh, so I'm going to close that for the first time in many years with power on and it's uh, it hasn't killed anything that's uh, something the uh, the mains light come on a little bit brighter um, there's no horrible sounds no horrible smells I'm not monitoring the current anywhere I'm just operating the switch for the beat frequency oscillator and just operating the wave change switch I've got the audio gain at maximum uh, the AVC is off on again RF gain is at maximum Okay, well that seems uh, pretty radio dead. Uh, there's no uh, no sign of sound, um, but uh, probably at those voltages that uh, stabilizer won't have uh, uh, done anything. Okay, um, no major surprises there. So um, what I'll do is um, organize myself to take some proper voltage readings. Uh, what I'm doing first is measuring the uh, the DC current so I've uh, just taken out one of the wires from that choke so I've got the uh, the DC from the rectifier at one side of the meter and the other side to, to the choke so the meters in series uh, with the choke uh, I'm on DC I'm on the 10 amp range first I got two uh, sorry I'll just show you on the I've got two options with this meter. I've got uh, a 10 amp range and a 300 milliamp range. I'm on the 10 amp range first. So uh, I'll just switch that off. And um, because I'm of what I'm doing, I always make sure that if these leads fell off, I've got the leads positioned in such a way that they can't sort of drop into my lap or anything like that because you wouldn't want the meter to sort of uh, deliver um, uh, two or three hundred volts uh, into your lap or uh, into any other part of your body. So I'll just plug it in. And switch on. Not seeing any DC current at all. Just switch on the standby. Okay, so 20 milliamps, that's, uh, that's not going to go far, is it? Um, okay, well, that's, uh, that's good. It's, um, it, it's good in as much as it's not, uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's not uh, a high current. So I could be encouraged to, uh, to go to full working volts now. Something I'll mention is uh, after you've been working on uh, the amps range, once you've got your meter disconnected from the circuit, always, always, always put it back into voltage if you've got a meter like this, because otherwise the next time you go and make a, uh, a voltage uh, test, um, if it's left in the amps range, uh, you can have a very nasty surprise.